This week on the agenda, we're in Belgrade to examine Serbia's economy, its road to net zero and an ironclad friendship with China. Serbia is the largest economy in the Western Balkans, with growth hitting almost 4% by the end of last year, well above its European Union neighbours. But what's driving that growth and what might the future hold? Ahead of President Xi Jinping's visit to Belgrade next week, I spoke to the governor of the National Bank of Serbia, Jorgovanka Tabakovic. Governor, I want to start with where we are now and take a snapshot uh, of Serbia's economy. Because when we look at growth, when we look at jobs, when we look at public debt, everything's going in the right direction. So what's driving that growth? Mogu da vam odgovorim onim što ja mislim ili prevedeno na jezik MMF-a kao jednog od najstrožijih posmatrača, ali i partnera Srbije koji je u prilici da ocenjuje trenutak gde se Srbija nalazi danas. E pa rečima Međunarodnog monetarnog fonda sa čijeg se prolečnog zasedanja upravo vraćam, jeste da je Srbija jedna od svetlih tačaka ili kako nas nazivaju zvezda vodilja u ekonomiji i da u tom smislu očekujemo u najskorije vreme posetu gospođe Kristaline Georgijeve koja želi da pokaže kako to jedna zemlja za jednu deceniju može potpuno da promeni svoju ekonomiju i da je od stagnirajuće i sumnjivih izgleda pretvori u ekonomiju koja je primer za ugled ne samo u regionu, nego i u čitavoj Evropi, a u jednom dobrom delu da pokaže i ispravnost politika koje primenjuje Srbija kao zemlja, koja vodi računa o samoj sebi i svom specifičnom putu, ali i uz pomoć i podršku Međunarodnog monetarnog fonda. Želim da dodam zašto je to važno. Važimo za zemlju koja nije zemlja koja se ugleda na druge. Zemlja koja ima svoj specifičan put. I da u tom specifičnom, na tom specifičnom putu mi jednostavno tražimo najbolja rješenja, ne slušajući naloge drugih, već vodeći računa o sebi i o tome gde ćemo se naći. Rezultati o ispravnosti tih ekonomskih politika govore najbolje. Javni dug ispod 50 procenata. 48,7 procenata je javni dug. Neću da ga upoređujem sa ostatkom Evrope, jer je gotovo dvostruko niži. 60 procenata od ukupnih stranih investicija koja dolaze u ovaj region dolaze u Srbiju. Rekordne su. Nezaposlenost je snižena na nivo od 9%, a iznosio je preko 25%. Zaposlenost je maksimalno povećana i svi su izgledi da ostvarimo cilj koji sam ja sebi sa svojim timom zadala, a to je da konačno i formalno dobijemo investicioni rejting. Nije baš u najkraćem, ali jeste najbitnije. Now, at the Belt and Road Forum um, in Beijing last year, President Vucic signed a free trade deal with China, and that's due to come into force next year, I believe. What, what impact do you see that having on the economy beyond the friendship and the economic ties you already have forged? Tih 18 ugovora koji su potpisani svojevremeno u Kini i koja su deo pojasa i puta, meni su izuzetno važna. Dok su se mnogi trudili da konkurentnost između Amerike i Kine, Evrope i Kine, kroz pojas i put gledaju kao osvajanje zemalja gde prolazi taj put svile, Srbija je u tome videla svoju šansu da nastavi te partnerske odnose, jer smo ih na tim osnovama i započeli, 
i da razvoj svojih najznačajnijih strateških grana od digitalnih tehnologija do poljoprivrede razvija zajedno sa Kinom upravo kroz taj, da kažem, veliki projekat i dugoročni projekat kakav je svaki kineski pojas i put. Zašto? Svakoj zemlji treba da ima najsavremenije usluge u smislu primene digitalne tehnologije. Ali je moj princip da stalno ponavljam digitalne tehnologije ne treba da upravljaju nama. Treba da nam služe. U tom smislu ne treba se fokusirati samo na digitalne tehnologije jer morate da razvijate i svoju poljoprivredu. COVID nam je najbolje pokazao koliko je i poljoprivreda važna u trenutku kada prestaju letovi aviona, kada prestaju lanci snabdevanja, kad se zaustavljaju brodovi i zatvaraju luki. Kad svaka zemlja treba sebi da obezbedi u tim incidentnim okolnostima da građani budu nahranjeni i da mogu da rade posao koji zemlju održava funkcionalnom. Znači da napravimo razliku. Nijedna država danas ne može da bude samodovoljna, ali mora da ima minimum suvereniteta u proizvodnji hrane i u zaposlenosti svojih ljudi koji mogu da žive od svoga rada i da žele da ostanu da žive u svojoj zemlji. Naša šansa u ovoj velikoj, da kažem, investicijonoj aktivnosti kakva je pojas u put i put zaista se vidi u svakoj od oblasti koja je predmet tog velikog projekta i jedan mali dokaz da mi jesmo povećali svoju trgovinsku razmenu govori da je trgovinska razmena između Srbije i Kine sa nekih desetak miliona dolara povećana na preko milijardu i po u 23. godini. I cilj nam je da smanjimo svoj trgovinski deficit u odnosu na Kinu znajući gde je nama mesto kao maloj otvorenoj ekonomiji koja ima svoje da potencijale ali koja ne želi da se upoređuje sa neuporedivima, ali da postaje značajan partner tih velikih zemalja koji imaju velika tržišta i kojima mi želimo da budemo atraktivni za ulaganja. Serbia is in the waiting room, if you like, to join the European Union. So you must have an eye on that. This waiting room is so long. Ta čekaonica se pretvara u zarobljenost čekanjem. Jedan naš slavni književnik, Meša Selimović, rekao je da je najlakše zarobiti čoveka čekanjem. Jer dok čeka, čovek ne preduzima nikakve aktivnosti. Ne želimo danas čekaonica za Evropsku uniju drži zarobljenim i da u tom smislu, čekajući da se uvede evro, ne radimo na rastu svog bruto domaćeg proizvoda, na poverenju u domaćoj valuti i na podsticanju onih grana koje želimo da se razvijaju najbrže. Onog trenutka kada Evropska unija bude odlučila da je Srbija dovoljno dobra da postane i formalno članica Evropske unije, neće biti teško zameniti dinar u evro. Do tada 
činit ćemo sve da dinar bude stabilna i cenjena valuta koju će svaki građanin želeti da ima i na štednji i koju neće žuriti da promeni u evro. How would you like to see the EU changing its strategy towards Serbia? Promena pristupa Evropske unije ne zavisi od toga šta ja želim. Ja činim sve da im pokažem da Srbija, onako kako to investitori kažu, usudila se da ima svoj put i da bude drugačija. Svih 27 zemalja u Evropskoj uniji imaju svoje raznolikosti i sličnosti. Ljudi su u njima nečim zadovoljni, nečim nisu zadovoljni. Ja ne želim da se bavim njihovim nezadovoljstvima. Ja želim da gledam dobre strane Evropske unije i reći ću vam otvoreno. Za mene je Evropska unija do posljednjeg sukoba u Ukrajini bila unija koja ima dostignuće koje se ne može poreći. Bila je poželjna zato što je mir bio cilj iznad svega. Ne samo ekonomski napredak, nego i mir. Ekonomski napredak je ostao cilj Evrope. Nisam sigurna koliko u ovom trenutku Evropska unija radi na postizanju mira. Ja, ne samo kao guverner, nego kao žena, kao majka, mogu da vam ponovim staru istinu. Kina nikad nije vodila osvajačke ratove. Ni Srbije. Uvek smo bili prinuđeni da vodimo odbranbene ratove. Ali i kad god i kakav god rat da postoji, on jednog trenutka mora da se završi. A treba da se završi uz što manje gubitaka, pre svega ljudi, ali uz što manje gubitaka u privredi. U tom smislu, šta ja želim od Evropske unije, želim da Srbiju vidi onakvom kakva ona jeste. Da je Srbija svesna da je naše najubojitije, najefikasnije oružje rast ekonomije. Otvorenost ka svetu, otvorenost za sve investitore, za sve partnerske odnose, da Srbija nije zaglavljena u prošlosti, u svom snu kako je nekada bila velika, poput nekih kolonijalnih zemalja, koje ne mogu da izađu iz te matrice svoje istorije o kolonijalnom vladanju. Ovo je novi svet. Novi svet u kojem smo toliko međusobno povezani da ova nova fragmentacija donosi samo nove troškove. I u tom smislu zatvaranje koje je uzrokovano prvom rečenicom koju je zgovorio svojevremeno Trump, America first, izvinite, ali i za Srbiju, Srbija je prva. Za Kinu, prva je Kina. Za Veliku Britaniju, Britanija je ispred svega. Ali, dogod verujemo u sebe i u svoj narod i u svoju budućnost, to ne znači da ne možemo i da ne treba da sarađujemo. Želela bih da Evropska unija ne postavlja Srbiji pokretne ciljeve. I kad god dostignemo jedan, oni postave novi politički. I u tom smislu sve što uradimo u ekonomiji za nas je najvažnije, jer im tako pokazujemo 
da ne gubimo ni volju, ni energiju, da rastemo jer samo zadovoljan čovek koji je i srećan čovek kad može svoje deci da obezbedi pristojan život, može da bude strpljiv i da u čekaonici u Evropskoj uniji ne bude zarobljen čekanjem, nego da raste dok čeka. Governor Tabakovic, thank you very much. Thank you. Still to come here on the agenda in Belgrade. Green mining and green hydrogen. We'll find out how Serbia is planning its transition to net zero. We are all connected across borders, across continents, connected by ideas, a shared humanity. Stay connected. Welcome back to the agenda at the Kalamagdan Fortress in Belgrade. Like so many nations around the world, Serbia has set itself strict carbon emissions reductions targets by the end of the decade. And it's very clear that China is set to play a key role in that drive to net zero. I spoke to Serbia's Minister for Mining and Energy, Dubranko Djedovic. Serbia is determined to get to net zero and has started its process of decarbonization and diversification of our sources. Um, I need to remind you that our energy relies more than 60% on fossil fuels at present. So our road is uh, prolonged by that fact. Simply, this is the natural resource that we have been, actually that we have available in our country and that we have been exploiting. However, we are very determined and we have started the process of decarbonization also through our planning documentation, uh, such as a National Energy and Climate Plan, new strategy of energy development sector um, that are about to be adopted by the new cabinet, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, but all the public consultations have um, been gone and actually the National Energy and Climate Plan envisages that by 2030 we will have 45, at least 45 percent coming from renewable energy uh, and that we will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 40 percent compared to the levels of 1990. So green and clean energy very much on your priority list of, of things to do I, 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 and in fact you recently signed a, a memorandum of understanding with China for two billion dollars worth of investment in solar, in wind and, and in hydrogen. Correct. How important is that for Serbia? It is extremely important because it adds on to our ongoing efforts um, that we want to develop more also reversible hydro power plants that we have already hydro in our um, energy mix, but building more reversible hydropower plants will enable us to create natural battery storage, which is of course for integration of renewable energy into our grid very important. Um, the MOU we have signed recently uh, with um, Shanghai Fengling um, actually enables and envisages the construction within the Bor area, which is in eastern Serbia, which is the actually mining uh, region, um, some 2 gigawatts, 1.5 gigawatts of wind and 500 megawatts of solar, including the production of 30,000 tons of green hydrogen. It's a prospect uh, development for another five years. So for us, it will be very significant considering that 
today's overall install capacity is around um, above 8,000 uh, megawatts. So adding 2,000 to that just in one single investment and in the middle of the mining complex, it's extremely important. I do want to talk about energy security because, because the EU, for which you know, Serbia has been a candidate um, nation for, for over a decade, mm. um, has some energy security concerns when it comes to China. Are, are they wrong to think that? I think we need to first think about our citizens and our economy. At least in Serbia, we have taken so far that approach. So relying on partners from East and West that can help us to ensure that energy security, first and foremost for our citizens, it's for us a priority number one. Um, so all taken into consideration, we are working closely also with uh, companies from China and with our Chinese partners uh, to uh, enable or further enable the energy security uh, through diversification of energy sources uh, to um, allow for more uh, green um, power plants, uh, be it from wind or solar. So in that context, I must remind you, the last year China was actually the country that added the most renewable uh, sources into its system. So it means that they have the technology, they have the knowledge, they have the skills. And we are open to partners from all over the world to actually enable the, the cooperation that can actually bring us maybe the, the, the new technology and developed technology that we don't have enough in our country. You talk a lot about those established strategic partnerships that you have with Chinese company. I, I'm, um, I'm thinking about um, China's Xijing Mining. Sure. Um, and they're set to expand their operations, I believe, um, in Serbia. So w what's that going to mean for, for the country? What's that going to mean for the economy? While you're, you're balancing the, the green transition at the same time. Um, Mining is a big part of our um, opportunities for development. Uh, the the um, impact uh, of mining uh, to our GDP has increased significantly in the last 10 years. Um, and it will continue to grow because we are the country rich by natural resources. And we should use them, however, respecting all mining standards respecting all ecological standards, inspecting, respecting all environmental standards. And this has been our approach so far, and I believe that sustainable mining and modern green mining is also possible. Um, but we have had so far positive experiences. With um, ZG Mining, certainly it has changed the landscape of Eastern Serbia since they, uh, their arrival um, five years ago. And um, they have invested over uh, 2.5 billion US dollars uh, by now, um, have employed 7,000 people, and the average salary of those workers, which are majority, of course, Serbian uh, workers from Serbia and Serbian citizens, uh, are quite above the uh, regional aver uh, Republican average, so the average of uh, salaries in our country. So um, all that uh, put into context, um, good part of those investments are related to environmental protection. So the new uh, copper smelter has been completed uh, in Bor, which has actually significantly contributed to um, the decrease of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So actually this year um, there has been zero uh, greenhouse gas emissions coming out of that facility uh, compared to tenfold larger uh, in the past and before these investments have taken place. Um, and I have seen um, their green mines in China, I have visited them, and with new also worldwide um, standards such as uh, IRMA standards in mining that uh, we will be exigent uh, in the future to be applicable onto new uh, projects and new investments. I believe that sustainable mining is something that we can achieve. And I think you're sitting on quite a lot of lithium. Is that why everybody wants to be your friend? <laughs> well, I think uh, first, of, first and foremost, this is something important for us, for our people, um, and we should analyze the best ways to use it or best possible options. Of course, that may involve the application of new technologies, 
uh, more expensive technologies. So we would need to uh, discuss with um, different possible partners um, the viability of applying those in order to be able to um, use that natural resource efficiently. And this is what it's we have been thinking about. It's not just any natural resource though, no, this is strategically worth billions. Yes, absolutely. And um, the market studies show that um, the, 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 the market value will increase uh, more than 10 times in the future of this natural resource. Why? Because we cannot ensure the energy, green energy transition without this mineral and few other critical minerals that some of them we also have such as copper for example or gold so um, or borat um, that we also have in that part of Serbia which is in the in the southwest um, however we have had some public debates and acceptability of those uh, uh, of that project obviously from um, local perspective environmental perspective social perspective and this is something yet that we will need to consider in the future. However, um, we um, do believe, and on a global scale, without more mining, without more um, expo exploitment of our exploration of um, natural resources or critical raw materials, it will be impossible to reach the net zero. I think this is something that we all should be aware, and that probably good uh, part of the world is aware um, and bringing the value chains actually to be completed in um, one place as much as possible and here we think of Serbia obviously so from raw material to exploitation, exploration, processing and then getting to the final product such as um, the lithium batteries or even further electric cars production. This is something that would significantly benefit Serbian economy and then of course uh, have a huge impact on um, the quality of life and also increase in salaries, increase in employment um, of the part of Serbia which still has those challenges. So you're saying the starting point when, when it comes to, to mining with all those environmental concerns in, in mind is to have a plan for circular economy. Yes, exactly. And I think this is our this is our critical thinking. And obviously we need to have dedicated partners that are able to respond to that demand. But we will continue thinking in that way and ensuring that this actually materializes. Speaking of dedicated partners, well what are you expecting, what are you hoping to hear from President Xi on his visit to Serbia? I think it is a great occasion. First of all, it is a great honor for Serbia and for uh, its people to have uh, a visit of uh, Xi Jinping uh, in a short period of time. Um, and um, to, to actually demonstrate our solid cooperation in the past, but also to enable the grounds for its further development. And um, as I say, uh, there are two other European countries Serbia, the only non-EU member state that uh, the President uh, C will visit in this, um, in this occasion. I think it's, it really showcases the um, good friendship, cooperation, but also trust and partnership that we have had so far, uh, certainly in many areas, energy being one of it, um, but also the possibilities and discussions where our cooperation can develop, can strengthen even further. And of course, having reliable partners is something that is in our interest. Dubravko Dedovic, thank you very much. Thank you. You can watch every episode of The Agenda in full on CGTN Europe's YouTube channel. And for exclusive extra content from me, my guests, and the rest of the team, don't forget to check out at The Agenda Show on TikTok. Coming up on a future agenda, as Europe heads to the polls, we look at what's really at stake in this summer's EU elections. But for now, from me, Julia Mann, and from all of the Agenda team here at the Belgrade Fortress, goodbye.